All right, now that I have an assets file and a stage file, you know, and I kind of showed you how that worked by just taking away the nose, but that's not what my animation is. My animation has to do with my storyboard, right? So what do I need to do? I need to get back to just a basic yellow face. And in order to do that, I need to strip my asset that I already have of everything, basically, and then rebuild a yellow circle and actually make eyes that don't look like they're dead and just all kinds of things. So this is where I need to start understanding my assets better. And to do that, I can start labeling them. So let me take away the nose and then label it nose. The next are the cross eyes. I labeled it that way. The next is the tongue groove. I spelled tongue wrong, but it's okay. It's there. Then we have the whiskers. Then we have the icicles. Why isn't it all the icicles? Well, this is what's tricky about compositing and layers and vector shapes, and they don't need to stay vector shapes. But these ones go on top of the eyebrows. Then you have the eyebrows, and then you have the middle icicle that goes, but this could be added to the top icicles. So let me see, let me add that into this folder. This is kind of organizing things and simplifying them as much as I can. And then we have the eyebrows, but then we have that one icicle that exists beneath the eyebrows. Then we have the tongue. Then I have the drop shadows on that icicle and that icicle. So I'm gonna merge these together. Instead of merging them, I'm going to put them into a group just to keep them as vectors, because why not? And then I'm going to call this icicles middle. And then I have the eyeballs, the white of the eyeballs. And then I have a group that's incomplete. It's this kind of line going between the eyes. So I need to find the other parts of that group. Then I have the mouth, I labeled that. Then I have parts of different things. Let's see. So this is part of this eyebrow group. So let me move that in with it. And there's one other part still to find. I'm just going to jump to auto select and find it. Move that up into this group. Okay, so now I don't know what I'm going to call this. Let's say um, eye connector. Turn that off. Mouth, turn that off. Those clouds I need to merge with some others. I have these dots. I'll call those in a group eye dots. So even something as simple as our emoji design has, has a lot of components that can be assets that I might want to move and animate individually. Then this group is a lot of the clouds. I can merge that, I think, with the other clouds. Yeah, because the, the eyes, the eye dots don't have anything to do with that. So I'm going to put one group inside the other group. Ah, but look what happens when I do that. Because of the layer styles, it kind of messes with it. Because of the different layer styles on the groups themselves. So I'm going to call this clouds, brain clouds. So those are my brain clouds top. And then I'm going to have my brain clouds middle. And it's good to keep these separate because I can then animate these clouds differently. And then I can have my brain. So behind the brain clouds middle, I have the brain kind of explosion spout. And I can move that into the brain clouds middle folder. Can I? Nope, I need it to be separate for that edge. OK, because they each have different effects. But the eye dots I can move beneath all of those. So just this, by simplifying and labeling and combining what assets you can, 
as you label them, it's going to help you understand exactly what you have to play with, what your toy box is. And then I have, I'll call this my half head. All right. And I really like the layer styles I have on my half head. I like the glow. I like the bevel and emboss, the inner shadow. But what I need for my keyframes is I need a full head. So now I can start building assets. I've labeled all of these. I'm going to save it, Command S. These are my assets. I'm going to keep building new ones. But first, you want to start with ones that you can all use. OK, now I'm going to duplicate my half head. And so I have a half head copy. I'm going to rename that copy full head. Because when the time comes in my story for the head to get blown off, I need to change it from being a full head shape to a half head shape. So I want both of those assets. Okay, my full head, I'll go ahead and put on the bottom, turn off the half head. And how do I change it? Well, I use Command T, just like we have for other compositing. And then what I can do is I can stretch it, holding down Shift. I can modify it. Remember, it's a duplicate. I can use warp and tug it from the edges and try to make it into a perfect circle. But it's kind of weird for me to take this shape and try to turn it into a perfect circle when what I can also do is just use my shape tools and make a perfect circle that matches holding down shift. Now, what do I mean by match? Well, it needs to, whoops, it needs to fit the original shape's bottom, right? So this is a brand new shape. Now what I can do is I can take the effects from the, the the full head copy I made, and I can just drop them onto my full circle. And then I can delete the full head layer and then relabel this as full head. So you'll end up creating a lot of layer assets, but then delete any that you don't have any use for at any time in the animation. You want to keep it as clean and useful as possible. So when the head explodes, the background shape is going to go from this yellow circle to this kind of compressed half circle. And to make them match a little bit better, actually it kind of makes sense that it would compress down with the force of the explosion. So I like that. So I'll keep that full head. Okay, save my assets because I just built something new. In order to get this basic face, I need new eyes. So I'm gonna go up to where I had eyes. And they already have a lot of effects on them. And what I'll do is just duplicate them. Command J. And then basically, I am not going to try to change these lines and circles into just circles. Instead, just like I did with the face, I am going to make new vector shapes. And you can do this with regular shapes. You can do this with your paintbrush. You can make assets any way you like. And I'm going to make a slightly oblong eye. And because I'm making it within this layer group of the cross eyes copy, it's going to have all of these effects added to it, except now it's black instead of brown. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm going to move that duplicate over. And then I'm going to erase all the other things, except I might want to copy the color. So let's see if I want that brown. I can see what it is. I'm going to limit it to web colors. And then I'm just going to, let's see, what's an easy way to do that? 
I'm going to find it, and then I'm going to use the uh, eyedropper tool to select it. It's under my recently used colors. There it is. And now I can go to this, and I should, ah, shouldn't be so difficult. All right, I'm making this harder than I need to for myself. I'm just going to choose the color and I'm going to select the brown from, from that object. And to make it easy, I'm going to turn off the other effects. And then I'll make the other eye match. There we go. So now I have this kind of greenish brown. So it's going to be different for what you're using, but you just want to understand your assets as cleanly as you can. Then I'll turn on the effects, and then I will change its name from cross eyes to just eyes. I'll call this eyes one, because this is their starting position. But I might animate and change these eyes as I go. Okay, what else do I need to build for that first keyframe? I just need a mouth. I already have a mouth asset. Here it is, mouth opening. But I'm going to duplicate it. Actually, I'm not even going to duplicate it. I'm just going to make a new shape. I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I'm just going to do a blank mouth that's about the right width. And then I want to round it a little bit at the edges. And instead of combining it with circles, I am going to simply soften its corners. And this is something we will learn in vectors with Illustrator. This is a, a functionality they've added to vector shapes in Photoshop. You can see by the corners, they have these little inner anchors. These are what are called rounding corners. And I can just drag those and it will round all of my corners for me as much as I want. So that's pretty handy. Okay, so now I've got my default first expression. Eventually it will turn into this mouth and eventually the eyes will turn into these eyes. But for now, this is a keyframe. I'm going to keep the textures of those original assets. It gives a little variety to it. And the, the bevel and emboss and the, the inner shadow, all of that. So how do I now put this over to my stage where I have my final frame? I go to the topmost layer that is turned on where the eyes are. I select that layer and then I hold down option and I can right click. Should be able to, but anyway, hold down option, go to layer, merge visible. That will create a new merged layer with the background turned on. Then I hit command A to select all and select all is not under edit. It is under select and then all. Yeah, it is something we use a lot. So just remember the shortcut for it is command A to select all. Then I can go to edit and copy. The shortcut is command C. Then I move to my stage and I say edit paste, which is command V. So I'm going to do that all again really quickly so you can see what the process is. Okay, once I have everything set up for my next frame, I click on the topmost layer that has an eye visible. I hold down Option. I say Layer Merge Visible. I then hit Command. Then I hit Command C, and then I move to my stage and hit Command V, and it pastes it in. 
And then I'm going to get into the habit of then hitting 